All right, we have one of the big winners from Saturday night's UFC on ESPN 15 event. She defeated Maria Agapova via second round TKO and made some history at the same time. By odds, this was the biggest upset in UFC history, and we're being joined by Shauna Dobson right now. Shauna, how are you? Hey, Mike, I'm doing good, man. It's great to talk to you again. And congratulations, considering, you know, everything that was seemingly against you here, the odds, the hype surrounding Maria coming in on a three fight skid to have this fight play out the way that it did. This had to have been the most satisfying win of your career, was it not? Yeah, it felt really good. Um, you know, we we knew we didn't really much feel the pressures of of uh, what was going on going in. We, we tried not to focus on the outcome just the journey just the process and we knew I knew that if I trusted myself trusted my training and my body that it would turn out how it did so you know I'm I'm definitely excited about that I guess we should start at the beginning of this tale because in June Maria makes her UFC debut she submits Hannah Cyphers who went up a weight class on short notice to take the fight and after the win she calls you out by name how did you react to that yeah, uh, I wasn't too surprised that Maria called me out because they had offered me a short notice match with her, uh, kind of like the beginning of COVID, back when the, the you know the UFC was like you know we're still going to be putting on uh, events and you know I just wanted to make sure that I was making good decisions. Me and my coaches wanted to make sure that we were being smart about it because I hadn't had access to my coaches my training partners, my gym. Um, so I wanted to make sure, you know, this is this is top level. And we knew that our next fight was going to be, uh, we had to go out there and show, show you know, 100% of my growth. So I wanted to make sure that I was 100% ready. Yeah, because you were coming off that tough loss to Priscilla Cachuera in February. You got finished in under a minute. And, you you know, from all the times we've spoken, you you've had all this, you know, belief in yourself and losing three straight is very difficult in the UFC, but you got the opportunity to stick around here. Did you think that after the Cachuera fight that, that you might be done, that, that you might get released? No. Um, yeah. I mean, I, I think that that was, a uh, a pretty, uh, you know, pretty fair thing to say that after that fight, you know, I, it was, it was going to be, I, I was, thinking that I wouldn't get another shot and I was disappointed because that fight did I didn't get a, ch a chance to show all the growth that we had made with uh, team elevation so you know I, I think I believe in fate I believe everything happened the way it did for a reason and you know I, I'm I'm glad I got a, a chance to show that you know I'm in here grinding and I'm growing and you know it's it's just continuous growth is what's going on yeah it you know, you mentioned Elevation Fight Team. They've found tremendous success over the last couple of years. This year, they've really been bursting out as one of the top gyms in the sport. Justin Gaethje's win really put them on the map even more so. When did you when did you make the move to Elevation? Um, I had so I had met um, Corey Sanhagen uh, when we both fought on the Stipe uh, DC two card, and you know he was kind of like. Uh, you know, anytime you're out in the area, come hit me up. Um, my girlfriend's brother, he actually lives out in Denver, and he said, you know, if you come out here to train, like, we'll hold you down. You know, we'll give you a place to stay. Uh, so, you know, I, I went out, checked out Elevation, vibed really well with the coaches, and then it was December that we packed up everything, and we, you know, we moved down. We just we made that sacrifice that we know we needed for my career, and it was it was a great decision. You know, I love that team. I've never gelled like this uh, with a team before, with coaches, and had just a holistic training. So I love it. What have you made of, you know, being a Colorado resident now, just being out there, <laughs> living there now? Have, are you enjoying the process? I mean, obviously, you're, you're gelling well with your team, and you got a big win, and that's always something to celebrate. But just, yeah. you know, living there, moving there, what is that like for you? Oh, man, it's different. Um when we moved in the winter, I realized it snowed way too much. It snowed like <laughs> multiple times a week. I was like, oh my God, like leaving for training, go into training, leave out, and then it'd be snow all over my car. I was over it. Uh, me coming from the East Coast, you know, I'm used to snow, but that was next level. Uh, I'm getting used to it, uh, enjoying the nature and the mountains and, and hiking and, and things like that. 
that that uh, Denver has to offer. What do you think has has changed in you since making the move? Because, you know, like you mentioned, the game never stops changing, never stops evolving. But as important as the physical is in the sport, it's the mental that carries a lot of weight, just as much, if not more. What do you think yeah. has changed for you in that aspect since you made that move? I think that the, the physical and the mental have kind of just, you know, accent. They kind of complement each other, you know, as far as the training um, you know, we have systems in place. We have relationships that the coaches have with each other and the way they communicate, you know, um, that 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 help fighters grow. And 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 pretty much the biggest thing for me was allowing me to be me and allowing me to be creative um, and, and just teaching teaching me how to fight like me. And I think that's that's one of the biggest things that I was looking for that I wasn't getting before. And. I, that's made the world a difference being with these guys. So the fight gets booked and as we're getting closer and closer to it, it it's becoming the, the Maria show. She got the fight she asked for. She's the next star that the UFC is going to try to push and the odds are coming in. It's super inflated on her end. You're the huge underdog. I know you're not paying attention to it too much because you're yeah. focused on the fight and what you need to do, but there's gotta be a part of you that's, that's seeing all the noise and, and, and seeing what's happening here. Right. Yeah, I tr like you said, Mike, I try not to pay attention too much. I tried to stay off social media. I didn't look at any of her social media or any of her interviews. You know, uh, I respect her. She's a, a fellow martial artist. I respect her getting in the cage with me. But, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't about to give that whole Maria hype train gas. You know what I mean? As far as I, con I was concerned, it was the Shauna show. As far as I was concerned, I was ready to shock the world. We, we, we said that. We said that before. Well, as, we, as we were walking out, my head coach, Sean Madden, said, are you ready to shock the world? I said, yes, sir. We got in there, and that's what we did. So we, we were only concerned about me and, and my mission and what I had to do. People handle being underestimated in different ways, right? Like outside of the people around you and your team and your coaches, like nobody truly knows what you're going through, what you're dealing with, and how you handle these things. Like for some people, I mean, it could just drain you. And for other people – it's complete fuel. And I, yeah. I think like for me specifically, you know, I, I've dealt with this since moving over to MMA fighting because there weren't a ton of people who had seen what I've been doing work wise over the last few years to set myself up for the opportunity. And you're damn right. It fueled me. It still does. But at the same time, there is a part of you that's like, oh man, like I know what I'm doing. Like how come nobody else sees it? Why do they say these things? But you've yeah. sort of learned how to put that stuff to the side. How have you been able to do that? Uh, me and my coach, uh, me and all of my coaches, actually, we uh, we do a lot of mental training. Uh, we think that that's just as important as the physical training. So, you know, there was a brief moment. I was look, I was betting on the uh, the previous card, Steep A and DC uh, DC three. I was betting on that card, and then I stumbled upon my odds, and I was like, oh my god, that's ridiculous. I had no idea till like the week before. It's like, oh my god, that's ridiculous. Um, you know, but, you know, I knew that was, I was like, man, that's, I, I hope everybody's tuning in then. Cause, cause we about to put on, that's, that's all I could say, you know, um, uh, they, they, they were hyping her up and, and, uh, they, the, she was the next prospect. And, you know, I was like, come on, man, like, give me some respect. I've been doing this for a minute. You know what I mean? Um, I'm, I'm still, I'm still young in my career, but I'm, I've been doing this for a minute. I've fought a lot of tough fights. I've been in there for wars. I fought a lot of tough opponents. So, you know, uh, uh, the fact that they doubted me, you know, I didn't, I didn't take it. I wasn't upset about it or anything like that. It was just, you know, I was just excited. I was just excited to see everybody's face, everybody that betted against me, everybody that thought for sure I was going to get in there and, and lose. I was just, I was just, I wanted to see everybody's face. It was funny. A week ago, I talked to Daniel Pineda, who fought on the card the week before or at yeah. UFC 250, and he beat Herbert Burns, and he was a big underdog heading into that fight. But he said that friends and family members of his all bet, like, huge money on him that <laughs> to, to the effect of he, his friends and family won over a quarter million dollars betting on wow. his fight. Did anyone reach out to you and say, like, Shauna, you, you won me some, some, some cheddar here? Yeah, a lot of people did. Somebody even cash at me. They cash at me some <laughs> money. So if I, if I 
I was like, if they catch at me, then they must they must have came out good. But yeah, my my coach, he he didn't tell me. One of my coaches, my jujitsu coach, he didn't tell me till after. He was like, yeah, I made some money off you tonight. I was like, you bet. He was like, yeah, hell yeah, I bet on you. I knew I knew he was about to get it done. So, you know, I had uh, I had a lot of people believing in me, and and I I I keep beating myself up because I wish that I had bet on myself, but I don't. I think that's weird. I don't know to bet bet on yourself. Um, but I wish I had, man. I really do. I wish I put up my whole fight purse on that. <laughs> that would have been amazing. <laughs> what was what was the fight week like for you with you know with everything going on? We got a pandemic, quarantine, you know, multiple tests. This is your first fight since the COVID thing began. What was that experience like for you? Uh, it was pretty different, but the UFC did a good job to make sure that you know uh, the chances of anybody bringing anything in was very slim. Um, I liked it. I like, I wish we worked so hard and trained so hard during fight camp. So the opportunity to just sit, sit myself down and just chill and relax. Like that's, that's what I look forward to about fight week is just, you know, just focus on that one thing. You don't have, I'm, I'm, I'm doing my master's program. I, I work full time on top of this. So not having to worry about that for a week and just focus on the mission and just focus on the fight night that I love that. So I was cool being locked away. You know, um, if we were going somewhere like tropical or something and I couldn't like go out to the beach or somewhere cool, I'd be like, oh, that sucks. But, you know, Vegas, uh, I've been here enough to where it's like and it's too damn hot. It's really hot out here. <laughs> <laughs> are you are you still cool. are you still there or are you back home? Yeah. Yeah. I got my party shirt on. I'm still <laughs> out here. I'm still out here. We go home tomorrow, but yeah, me, me and my girlfriend and um and her family and her friends, we uh we all chilled out here for a few days. We're just doing some some quarantine celebrating, and then uh when I get back when I get back to Colorado, I have to get my damn wisdom teeth taken out. Oh. And then I know that sucks. <laughs> I have to get my wisdom teeth taken out, but then after that, it's back to the lab, you know. There you go. Have you had any of the wisdom teeth taken out yet, or is this the first time? First time, all four. I just, I'm just trying to get it over with. Just, I yeah. waited till after my fight. You know, I literally was like, okay, the week that of my fight, the week after, I want to get it done, taken care of, so we don't have to worry about it no more. There you go. You're in for a whole lot of fun. Let me just tell you. <laughs> but uh... oh man, I know, right? We saw how active Maria was in the fight with Hannah. She came out like a bat out of hell, and she kind of turned that up but e even more of a notch on Saturday night with you. Mm -hmm. This was something you and your team, I'm sure, were were more than adequately prepared for. Is that accurate? Yeah, we uh, we did a bunch of scenarios where, you know, she'll start fast. Um, we did where she could start slow. Maybe she would inch in. You know, you never know. Um but we had a we had a pretty good idea that she was going to start very quickly, very fast. And the idea was just, you know, just see the shots coming, block the shots and make sure that when I fired my shots, that they they counted, that they would stick and they would they would, you know, make a statement to her and slow her eyes down a little bit. So that's that's pretty much what we prepared for. And um, we drilled that trained that so many times, so much throughout camp that it just felt uh, robotic. It felt natural when I was in there. Yeah. It's, it's, it's gotta be something, especially at this level to see a fighter come out like that. Cause I mean, you fought aggressive strikers in the past, but this was, mm -hmm. this is different. This was just like, boom, 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 boom. Here we go. This yeah. is a style you don't see quite often at this level. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, I guess that works for her sometimes. Um, but also, you know, she's uh, what is she? She's nine and two now. You know, she's she's fought. She's been in there. She's experienced. So, you know, that that uh, I guessed bullshit. I'm not buying it. You know what I mean? Like I I get I, I had an adrenaline dump one time in my fight career. And that was my very first exhibition fight in like the basement of some, you know, kickboxing gym. You know what I mean? And and at this level as a pro. You don't you don't have an adrenaline dump, you know. You just I I'm gonna let you know like I was in there, she was in here in there. We both know what happened. I landed good shot. She might have tired herself out a little bit, but not enough not enough to be out of there like that. You know what I mean? I landed good shots, and that was my intention. That my intention was to make sure that my shots counted, 
and uh you know it it worked out it it, it worked out for me and and you know, I'm only saying this because I, I wish her well, and I wish I hope I wish her a speedy recovery. I heard she had to go to the hospital after the fight. Um, I wish her a speedy recovery, but you know, we gotta give credit where credit is due, man. Like, she, you know, if if she got tired, whatever. Um, she didn't. The the main outcome of the fight was because of what I did, and and you know, we we can't take away from all the hard work that I put in all camp. You know, all the hard work that I've put in and all the sacrifices that I've made for, you know, this past year, uh, these past, you know, eight months in my, for my fight career to make sure that I'm doing what I need to do. So, you know, I just, I'm, I, you're the first person I talked to, you know, first media person I talked to after the fight besides fight at night. So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, after hearing stuff on social media and stuff like that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and clear the air. You know what I mean? Uh, you don't have adrenaline dumps at your, what is it? Tenth, eleventh pro fight. You don't, you know. You 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 might have got rocked. You might have got rocked a few times, and and that's it is what it is, you know. And again, like I said, all respect. You know, I reached out to her. I'm, I don't think she's seen my message yet. Reached out, thanked her for the fight as always, um, and 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 asked if she was okay. But you know, at the same time, like let's not let's not make excuses. Let's let's call it what it was, and 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 that's why we got it done Saturday night. Yeah, because, you know, that first round was super active. Like, you had yeah. your moment, she had hers, you know, she got on yeah, top, you had her pace. back. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, the same exact pace. So, like, yeah. you know, you had to still weather that storm. You know what I mean? Like, regardless of whether she gassed it or not, like, you had to weather it and you had yeah. to overcome it and still get the finish. Did you think after the first round that she was getting tired? Did you feel that? Did you feel like it was just a matter of time here? I didn't, I didn't feel her getting tired. I felt, I felt pretty strong, like off jump. I felt, uh, strong in our, in our exchanges, in our, in our, uh, in the clinch. She felt strong when she was on the top, but, um, I could feel that, you know, just, just hours and hours of technique, just hours of having, having, you know, high level grapplers on my back, hours of being in the, in the cage with high level strikers, you know, just it, it, that, that experience helped out a lot in this fight, but I feel, I know that there was a shot that I landed from the bottom that landed clean. Um, I don't know if I, I've seen like a couple people said they saw that, but a, a shot that I landed from the bottom landed clean and, and that, you know, stumbled her a little bit as she was trying to get up to go into the second. But, um, I, I think that, uh, I mean, I didn't really. I, I guess I looking at looking back at the fight after I watched it, I, I saw that she was getting tired. But I feel like um, what put that put the icing on that, you know, put the accent on that was the the shots that I landed. The second round was was wild too because you know I think a lot of people did see her get up and and go back to the stool and she didn't look great. But then she come out, she comes out pretty hot. You landed a high yeah. kick like right off the bat, and then she took you yeah. down. And yeah. you reversed it, and th that was the beginning of the end. When the referee is just pulling you up, f first of all, before we get to like how you felt afterwards, mm -hmm. it's an empty arena. You're hearing your coaches, plain and simple, and you know you had her. You're on top of her. You're landing, and it seemed like you were going to transition to a submission. Was your team yeah, like yelling at you, being like, "No, no, 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 get <laughs> off, get off"? Yeah, they were like, "Get back on top, get back." I was going to go for the rear naked because I felt her. I felt her started. I guess that's when I felt her started to gas a little bit, and I felt her. I felt her uh, uh, start to uh, – the shots were building up. Um, so I was like, all right, I'm just going to go for the choke. And they were like, no, stay on top, stay on top. And I was like, all right. So I got back on top. And, yeah, that was – I trust my coaches. Whatever they tell me to do, I'm going to do it. Um, you know, they, they've they been in there, you know, on the side while we're sparring enough. They know me enough. Um, and and I'm glad. I'm glad I listened to them. It was an amazing moment when the fight was over because the ref pulls you off, you get up and you're running around, you're screaming underdog, you're barking at everybody, which was awesome. <laughs> what did that feel like? Did it feel like a like a 500 pound weight lifted off your shoulders once the ref pulled you off? Yeah, I think that's exactly what it felt like. It felt like, um, you know, this. It felt like this that last night or Saturday night was. Uh, years in the making, you know what I mean? Like it was, everything came together how it was supposed to. And, um, you know, just, I knew that I, I knew that 
I knew that I had a lot of doubters out there. I knew that people watching on TV were just waiting for me to get finished or her to get the decision or whatever. And it was just kind of like, you know, like, uh, what's up now? Like, y'all saw that? Like, you know, you know, you throw that's that's your prospect. That's your prospect. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's what it was for me. It was it was a huge relief. Um, but like I, uh, me and my coaches say, like, we're we're excited, but we're not surprised. You know, we knew what we came there to do. And 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 the only way that we were going to leave that arena was with our hand raised. That was it. Any means necessary. So it's vindication almost in a way as well. Definitely. Yeah, I would say that. So you, you told me that you glimpsed at the odds for UFC 252 and mm -hmm. noticed that you were a sizable underdog in the fight. You took a glimpse at it. But did you know that you winning was the biggest upset in UFC history, according to the odds? I didn't know that until uh, somebody had told me in the back, you know, we made history tonight. That was the biggest upset. First, they said it was the second biggest from Holly and uh, Rhonda. And then after... Uh, after it was, I guess, tallied out, it, I was the biggest upset in history. And, you know, that's, that's what I'm in this sport to do is, you know, make history and, 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 and do it for, do it for, uh, the culture, man. So I'm, I'm just excited about that. I, you know, that, that was probably a, a, a big thing about, about Saturday night was I, that I was able to make history and in, and in such a positive way for me. Dana White spoke with the media after the event and said that he was personally against the fight being made because mm -hmm. of your record. But he said that Mick Maynard had your back and said, essentially, like, don't let the record fool you. Like, I think she's a really good chance here. That has to mean a lot, right? Like knowing because the matchmakers over the years, they sometimes get a pretty bum rap. This was a pretty cool story to hear to, to see that Mick had your back here. Yeah. Um... Mick, Mick has always uh, believed in me, and and you know, I, that really means a lot. That really means a lot that he believed in me for this fight, and he's he's seen me. He's seen me from, you know, my me fighting on the local on the local circuit. He's seen me from me trying out for the Ultimate Fighter, um, and that means a lot to me that he was able to believe in me enough to to put me in there for this for this fight, and you know. I just, I just want to keep uh, proving them right. That's all I'm. That's all I'm here to do. You get your first bonus in the UFC. How about that? Yeah. It just keeps getting better and better for you. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I've been watching everybody get bonuses, man. I was like, man, it's, it's got to be my time sometime. But you know, it's just, it's just been everything. Like I said, everything came together perfectly this week. You know, I, I got, I got this, this upset. And I made history, and you know, I got the bonus, and just, you know. I just, I'm excited, but you know, I, I, I always gotta, always gotta, I can't get overly excited. You know what I mean? Cause there's, there's always another hurdle, you know, another war ahead of us, another battle ahead of us. So, you know, I'm enjoying it for now. And then, you know, back to the lab. So where do we go from here? Like it's, it's, it's hard to beat what you did on Saturday night. Your confidence must be sky high right now. When would you like to saddle up and do this again? Man, I got to first I got to get these wisdom teeth out right. and then uh, <laughs> and then uh, I'm going to talk to my coaches and, you know, I trust them. I trust them with my life, you know, obviously. So whatever they think is best, whenever, you know, talk to my management and, uh, you know, just just uh, heal up for my procedure and then uh, get get into it. There you go. Is there anybody that that sticks out to you? I mean, I made us. We have a little matchmaking show on the yeah. site that we do. I suggested because Rachel Ostovich went on Instagram and said that she's going to be cleared next month, which I found interesting because she was suspended retroactive to January. But maybe she got yeah. a reduced suspension or something. So, and you guys yeah. were supposed to fight in February, right? We were. We were. That would be cool. That would be cool. I we never did get that fight. Um, that would be cool. That'd be cool to to get in there with Rachel and uh, you know we were we were already prepared for that she was already prepared for me so that'd be exciting to see see what that would look like some months later so it was a, a great weekend for you but before we let you go because you're still enjoying this vacation time for you head home and then you get the wisdom teeth thing and i don't envy you at all but <laughs> what do you want to say to the people that have that have stood by you here because you know yeah. like you said 
losing three straight, especially in this sport, people yeah. come and people go. You've had a pretty darn good support system, it sounds like. What do you want yeah. to say to those people who have supported you along the way and have been there for the wins, the losses, and the greatest night of your career this past Saturday? You know, I just want to say thank you. You know, thank you for believing in me. Thank you for standing by me. And, um, you know, I'm going to keep making you proud. You know, we're going to keep making history. And it's only up from here. You know, uh, thank you for, for, for hanging with me through the lows and through the highs. And and uh, right now, it's, we're, we're riding a good wave. We're going to keep that going. Congratulations, Shauna. Amazing performance. Amazing night for you. Glad to see you back in the win column and do it in such emphatic fashion. Good for you. Looking forward to see what's next for you and uh, and heal up those teeth. You get to chill out for a little while. <laughs> Thanks, Mike. I know, but I don't get to eat all the good stuff that I thought I did. Just ice cream, soup, right? Soup and ice cream. Yeah, ice cream's all right. <laughs> all right. Get that good stuff. You deserve, You got a $50,000 bonus. You can get that fancy ice cream now. Oh, that fancy, the gelato? Yes. <laughs> There we go. All right, Mike, it's so good talking to you. See you Thank later. You, man. <laughs> Bye. Bye.